All right, so this is going to be a review from the intervention on quadratics. I'm going to go through the different things of quadratics, and then I will post this video for everyone to watch. All right, so the first thing you need to be able to do is you need to be able to make a complete graph of a parabola. So take it. The first thing is to find the x-intercepts. So you, if you remember, all x-intercepts have a y that's equal to 0. So we're going to take that equation, put it equal to 0. All of these are going to factor, so make sure you factor it. So it's going to multiply to be 2x squared and add to be negative 3x. That's going to give me uh, negative 2x and negative 1x. So that's negative 2x and negative 1x. Pull out the x's. I get x and then it says x minus 2 and x minus 1. Take each of our factors and put it equal to 0. And then solve for x. So that gives me my intercepts are 2, 0 and 1, 0. Again, this worksheet's on in Chapter 6 on Schoology, but I've also placed it in the folder for the school closure under Essentials. So I would suggest if you have a printer, print one out, as well as print out all the other worksheets for practice on quadratics. All right, so plot our points. So 2, 0 and 1, 0. Okay, for x or the y-intercept, the x is always 0. So I'm going to put 0 in the equation. And you're going to get y equals 2. While our equations are written in this form, the last number is always going to be your y-intercept. Okay, so I'm going to plot that point. Now, remembering that a parabola is symmetrical, so because that point, that y-intercept is 1 to the left and 2 up from my x-intercept, I can do another mirror point going the opposite direction, going to the right and up. So I know there's another point right there. The last thing we need to find is the vertex. So to do the vertex, the first thing is to average the x-intercepts. So that means we're going to take x is equal to 2 plus 1 divided by 2. So that's 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Again, remembering that our vert the vertex is in the middle between the x-intercepts. And now I'm going to put that equation, or put that 1.5 into the equation to find the y. So y is equal to 1.5 squared minus 3 times 1.5 plus 2. And I'm going to pull up my, my calculator. I'm going to put it over here on the side. And I'm going to go 1.5 squared minus 3 parenthesis 1.5 plus 2. And it gives me negative 0.25. Alright. Move this over. Don't forget to write your point. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put. And so I know you can't figure out exactly where negative 0.25 is, but if you go right in the middle and just put a little point right below there, and then connect your points, and there's your your parabola. All right, now. Solve the following quadratic equations. You must use each method at least once and show all your work. So there's our three methods. There's quadratic formula, factoring, and completing the square. So we start always looking to see if we can factor something. But to factor, it's got to equal 0. So I'm going to minus the x. And I'm going to get 2x squared plus x equals 3 minus 3 on both sides. And 2x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. Try our diamond problem to see if it factors. Take the first and the last and multiply them together. 
and the 1x goes here. Well, I know that there's two numbers that multiply to be negative 6 and add to be 1, and that would be 3x and negative 2x. So because I can do my diamond problem, I know it factors. So I'm going to make my box, put the 2x squared here, the negative 3 here, and then I can put the negative, the 2, ah, the negative 2x and the 3x. It doesn't matter where you put them, it'll still work out. So out of the bottom row, I can take a 2x, and that's going to give me x minus 1. Going vertically, I can put plus 3. That's about 3. Now do x minus 1 equals 0, and 2x minus 3 equals 0. That much right? Yeah. Solving, move the 1 over, I get x equals 1. And move this over, 2x equals 3, so x equals 3 over 2. All right, now let's do the next one. All right, start again with your diamond problem. Well, hold on here. Since we already factored, and it says we have to use each method once, we're not going to use factor again. So it's either going to be quadratic formula completing the square. Well, I have no number in front of the x squared, so we're leaning towards completing the square. And my middle number is an even number. So completing the square makes it easy. So to do completing the square, I'm going to minus 5 on both sides. Make my box. Put x squared here. Remember, you split the negative 12 into the, two, the other diagonal equals negative 5. So out of the bottom I can take an x and then I'm going to get x minus 6 and then going vertically. I'm not done until I complete the square. So negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. And remember that this number is always going to be positive and we have to add it to the other side. Take my parentheses. Squared equals negative 5 plus 36 is 31. Now square root both sides. And I get x minus 6 equals, don't forget the plus and minus, the square root of 31, because 31 is not a perfect square. And then move the 6 over. So x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 31. And there's our answer for that one. Okay, last one which means we have to do quadratic formula. But we should realize we're going to do quadratic formula anyway because the middle number is an odd number, and it just makes it harder. So my quadratic formula is, remember, it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you can't re remember the formula, go back to that YouTube video. Just type in quadratic formula song. You'll see it and just listen to it. Now, so my a, so it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And I can't fit the 0 in there. Okay. a is the number that's in front of x squared. Well, there's no number there. So a is equal to 1. Don't give, put any x's in there. b is going to equal to negative 7, and c is equal to 14. Substitute the numbers in and simplify. So x equals negative of b, which is negative 7, and always use parentheses, please. Plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 14 over 2 times 1. Okay, now we just simplify. Negative and negative is a set positive 7 plus or minus. And here I'm going to pull up my calculator. All right. Now I'm just going to type in, see what happens when I, watch what happens when I put the square root in there. All right, second, square root. And watch what happens. I get an error. 
So the reason is, is it says non-real answer. Well, that means it, I'm going to end up with a negative in my square root. So I can't. So I need to clear that. So don't put the square root in there. I don't want the decimals. Just put the values. So what's under the square root? So it's negative 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 14. And that gives me negative 7. Over 2 times 1 is 2. And that equals... Now, we can't leave the negative under the square root, so we're going to take that negative, and it comes out in, front, in between the plus or minus and the square root as an i. So 7 plus or minus i root 7 over 2. And there's our final answer. Okay? All right. We're pretty much done with the calculator now. All right, so this next part is factor. You guys are getting a really big problem understanding the difference between solving and factoring. Let me talk to you about it. Solving in problem two, everything has an equal sign. Factoring, there's no equal sign, so you can't solve it. So you're just going to break it down. And if you can take out a GCF, you're factoring it. So looking at the first one, I'm going to just do this in black. What does 3x cubed, x squared, and negative 14 all have? Negative 14x all have. They all have an x. And so I take that out and I get 3x squared minus 1x minus 14. Okay. Now we do our box. And I put my box inside of up the parentheses because I want to remember that that x is still there. I don't want to forget it. So 3x squared minus 14. 3 times negative 14 is negative 42x squared and negative 1x. So I have to figure out what multiplies to be negative 42 and adds to be negative 1. And that's negative 7x and positive 6x. Put those in the parentheses. Now we just factor out of the denominator. Out of 3x squared and negative, and negative 7x, I can take out an x. And that's going to give me 3x minus 7. Going vertically, what times 3 gives me 6? And that is a positive 2. So there's x plus 2 and 3x minus 7. There's my factors, and I'm done. Once I have no more squared terms, I am done. Okay? Please, please, please do not solve. Because there's no equal sign to start with, you can't solve it anyway. Next one. Okay, G this time they both have an x, but they, one's 75 and one's 25. I can take out a 25 out of both of them, so I'm going to take a 25x out. 75 divided by 25 is 3. x squared divided by x is an x. Negative 25 divided by, negative, divided by 25 is negative 1 and x divided by x is done. So now, looking at this one, I don't have any more x squared. I'm done. It's factored. You don't have to do more. Factoring is just breaking it down. As long as you break it down, you're good. Okay, this last one. I'm going to show you guys a new way to do it. Um, the way I showed you in class is there's more than one way to do everything. So first of all, look for a GCF. Okay, there's no x on the 9, so I can't take out an x, but 9 go, does go into 81, so I'm going to pull out that 9, and that's leaving me with 9x squared minus 1, and you guys tend to freak out when you see this one. You still have a squared term, so it means you have to try to factor it. So the thing about this one is the fact that 9 is 3 times 3, so this is going to be 3x and 3x. Negative 1 is 1 and negative 1. These are perfect squares because they're the same numbers, um, except for the 1 and negative 1. They're, they're opposites, but the 1 itself is a perfect square. So to make your parentheses, I'm just going to go 9, and I'm going to put my two parentheses. I'm going to take the 3x here, 
I'm going to take this one. That's a positive one, so put plus 1. Take the 3x here and bring down the negative 1. And there it's factored. Okay. All right, that's it for factoring. Let's go to, you can skip number 4. We skip that, in, and then now let's do the finding the equation. First step is find your x-intercepts. And it doesn't matter if it's a table or a graph. X-intercepts, the y is 0. So that's this one and this one. And all I need are the x values. So x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. Move everything to one side. So move to the left. So I'm going to add 3. x plus 3 is equal to 0. Minus 4. x equals negative, or excuse, I'm sorry, x minus 4 equals 0. Now we're going to write it as an equation with an a. So y equals a times x minus plus 3 and x minus 4. Now we need to find our a value. We're not done. Because what that a value is going to do is it's going to map it to the rest of the points in our table. So pick a point. So pick a third point from your table. And if it's a graph, you would use the third point from the graph. Doesn't matter which one you use. Some students are going to pick the the y-intercept because it's easy to work with 0. It doesn't matter. So I have 0, 48. This is x and this is y. And you're going to substitute it into the equation. So y is 48, so 48 equals a times 0 plus 3 times 0 minus 4. So that's 48 equals a times 3 times negative 4. Multiply those together and I get 48 equals negative 12a divided by negative 12. And a equals negative 4. And then the last step is to write the equation. So y equals negative 4. So put that a in place, or that negative 4 in place of a, and then just put those factors in. There's your equation. Last one. Same thing. Start with the x-intercepts. So my x-intercepts are negative 4 and 1. Make it equal 0. So move everything to the left. So x plus 4 is equal to 0. x minus 1 is equal to 0. Write your equation. Again, if this is too fast, I'm doing the exact same steps I did in the previous problem. Stop the video, rewind it to the previous problem, and do that one a couple of times to make sure you follow. The, you can follow the steps. Now, the thing is, the third point, some students are trying to use like this one way over here. Don't. Use the one they give you. It give you this one. Use it. So put 12 in for, at, for y equals a times 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 1. Use any point that they give you. Alright? Don't make it harder for yourselves. Remember, as I always say, work smarter, not harder. So 12 equals negative 4a divided by negative 4. And negative 3 is equal to a. Write your equation. y equals negative 3 times x plus 4 times x minus 1. All right, that's this whole worksheet. Again, practice with the other worksheets that I've put in the folder. Be prepared to clear.